Math 083 Final Exam Review, Problem 1, Parts A, B, C, D, and E. We will factor this polynomial by finding its greatest common factor. First, we consider the coefficients, 48, 12, and 16. The largest number that divides each of those coefficients without remainder is 4. Then we look at the powers of x. To find the greatest common factor for powers of x, you take x raised to the least exponent among the ones shown. And that would be x to the fourth in this case. And then for the powers of y, the least power of y is y to the first. So 4x to the fourth y is our GCF. We factor that out. 4 times 12 will give us 48. x to the fourth times x will give us x to the fifth y times y to the sixth would give us y to the seventh. 4 times 3 would give us 12. x to the fourth times 1 would be x to the fourth, so we don't need to write the coefficient 1. y times y to the fifth would give us that y to the sixth. 4 times 4 is 16. x to the fourth times 1 is x to the fourth. We don't need to write the coefficient 1 in this case. And y times 1 would give us this y this is our answer. We begin every factoring problem by looking for the GCF. For the coefficients 27 and 75, the greatest common factor is 3. There is no common factor involving the variable y. 3 times 9y squared would give 27y squared, and 3 times 25 would give 75. But we are not done factoring. 9y squared minus 25 is a difference of perfect squares. And we know that in general, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So it comes down to figuring out what the a and the b are. Well, the a in this case is the thing which squared will give you 9y squared. And that would be 3y. b is the thing which squared gives us 25, and that's 5 and we bring down the GCF, we have arrived at our final answer. In part C, we have a quadratic trinomial. The greatest common factor is 1. We don't consider that a valuable GCF. Sometimes we just say there is no GCF. We factor this using the AC method. A is 6, and C is negative 15. We multiply those two together, and we get negative 90. So we must find two numbers that multiply to negative 90, also add up to positive 1. Positive 1 is the coefficient of y. Positive 1 is the b value. The two numbers that accomplish this are positive 10 and negative 9. So the middle term splits into two terms, 10y minus 9y. Then we factor by grouping. Looking at the first two terms, the greatest common factor is 2y. We write 2y times the quantity 3y plus 5. The 3y plus 5 parenthetical factor will be repeated because we were able to successfully fill out this chart. So I write the 3y plus 5 first, knowing it will be there. And then it's a simpler task. What number do you multiply, do you distribute to both of these to make these last two terms? The answer is negative 3. So our answer is... 3y plus 5 times 2y minus 3. In part D, we see four terms. That makes us suspect that factoring by grouping might be a strategy to use. The greatest common factor for the first two terms is 2y squared. That will multiply by y minus 3 to give the first two terms. If factoring by grouping is going to work, this y minus 3 will be repeated. So I'm going to assume that it will repeat. I will write it down and hope that I can find a number to distribute against both of those to create the last two terms. It turns out positive 5 does the trick. So our answer involves two factors, y minus 3, the repeated parenthetical factor. The other factor is made up of 2y squared plus 5. In part E, we will begin by looking for the GCF. The greatest common factor for the coefficients is 8. 
the least power of m showing is m to the first. The least power of n showing is n to the first. 8 times negative 2 gives negative 16. m times m would give you m squared. n times n squared gives n cubed. 8 times 3 is 24. m is already accounted for. n times n is n squared. 8mn times 1 is 8mn.